Now we continue with Trypanosoma cruzi. Trypanosoma cruzi is the other species of trypanosomes affecting men, which is present in South America and in Latin America and Central America. Up to in South America, it goes down to Argentina. It is transmitted by the rejuvid box triatoma bugs and the metacyclic trypanosomes infect man through the bite wound by penetrating the bite wound by themselves or conjunctival mucous membranes where they are deposited with the insect pieces. When the insect takes a blood meat, reflexly it lays uh, it lays pieces which contain the, uh, the metacyclic trichomastigotes. This is called posterior station transmission. Life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi begins when the trypanosomes are given to men by the pieces of the bugs, they enter the circulation and then the metacyclic trypomastigotes go to any type of striated muscles, especially the heart muscle and other involuntary striated muscles where they, must, uh, they transform into emastigotes inside the muscle cells, the amastigotes multiply by binary fission in the cells and also then or infected tissues, then they go to the circulation as trypomastigotes or trypanosomes, then the cycle recurs again. When a, a triatomic bug takes a blood meal from man, they are attracted by the saliva of this bug and they go with blood meal inside the tri triatomid bug. Then the epimastigotes are present in the midgut. They multiply as epimastigotes. Then when they go to the hind gut of the bug, they transform again into metacyclic trypomastigotes ready for the next infection. This is the shape of the triatomid bug. It is about two centimeter in length, maybe one and a half centimeter. But man, when he is asleep, doesn't feel the bug when it comes to take its blood meal. Also, it has something um, like anesthetic structures in its saliva, which doesn't, which make the patient doesn't feel of its sting. Pathogenesis of American trypanosomiasis. When trypanosomes enter the bite wound, they produce local reaction, then they are carried to regional lymph nodes, enter the monocytes and histiocytes, and transform into emastigotes. They replicate as emastigotes in the cell, burst out to invade other cells. This causes acute local reaction with swelling at the site of bite. Then, chagoma is occurring. It consists of invasion of emastigotes deeper now into histiocyte, the tissue phagocyte, adipose cell, subcutaneous tissue, and adjacent muscle cells, and infiltration of the area by neutrophils and lymphocytes as an um, um, a, a tissue reaction or as an immune reaction against these trypomastigotes. So it 
the, the shaguma forms as a local swellings also. Then the stage of parasitemia. The parasites invade hepatic kupfer cells, spleen monocytes, cardiac cells, skeletal and smooth muscles, in, involuntary skeletal muscles and smooth muscles, and nearby nerve ganglia to form pseudocysts. The pseudocyst is a replication of amastigotes inside the muscle cells. The centra, in central nervous system, there is meningoencephalitis, which with perivascular lymphocytes infiltration and small granuloma formation around the trichomastigote or replicating amastigotes. This is a trivial transient inflammatory reaction in the brain and it is because the trichomastigotes try to escape from the immune reaction of the body. Then the chronic stage begins with cardiomegaly, which is diffuse and uh, which is diffuse myocarditis, fibrosis and infiltration with lymphocytes, macrophages and plasma cells, and damage of the autonomic ganglia. All this occurs to cause by the end fibrosis and destruction of cardiac muscles, which is cardiomegaly or the resultant heart failure. The same pathology can occur in the intestinal tract, in the esophagus and in the colon, because the musculosa there is also invaded, and the invasion of our back plexus of nerves. This causes cardiomegaly and cardiac symptoms, as well as dilatation of viscera, dysphagia, and constipation can occur, which is called collectively the mega syndrome. Host defense against Trypanosoma cruzi is firstly antibody-mediated immunity mainly associated with immunoglobulin M, then cell-mediated immunity by antibody-activated macrophages, neutrophils, and eosinophils. There is initial rise in the serum immunoglobulin M, followed by gradual decrease. This indicates that there is no antigenic variation like that which occurs in Trypanosoma, Gambiensi, and Rhodesia. There is autoimmune reaction against myocardium that the trypomastigotes or the amastigotes produce antigens similar to host antigens. So when there is immune reaction, it goes against the trypomastigotes as well as the host tissue, which is called autoimmune reaction. The blood vessels and interstitial muscle fibers also are affected. This is made by circulatory antibody called EPI antibody. May be formed against antigens secreted by the parasite to mimic host antigens. This is also a method of immune evasion. It is present also in Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiensi sometimes. The Trypanosoma cruzi needs iron for intracellular proliferation. So iron depletion can cause protection against the infection, while iron transfer into the cells may increase pathogenicity. This means that anemic people are not quite affected by the trypanosome like those who have normal hemoglobin level.
Now we come to the symptoms of the disease. The disease is most prominent in children less than five years where central nervous system symptoms predominate. In children more than five years, the acute stage is milder, followed by subacute or chronic stage. Chagoma is more common on the face but can occur any part of the body where the, the patient is bitten by the triatomid bug. It reaches full size within five days and subsides within two to three months. Trypomastigut can be found in Chagoma aspirates in early infection. Trypomosomes spread to regional lymph nodes within three days of infection, making them large, hard, and moderately tender. Aspirates contain the trypomas in the emastigot forms in this stage. At the first weeks, many indurated subcutaneous swellings may occur, especially in the face at one side. Periorbital edema and cheek swelling at one side is called Romana's sign. Sometimes swelling extends to the submaxillary lymph nodes, which is called oculoglandular syndrome. Parasitemia and generalized infection follow within days or weeks. There is generalized malaise, chills, high fever, muscle pains, and increasing exhaustion. This is the period where the children and the affected adults become feverish and become ill. Epistaxis is common in young children. There is generalized lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly, punctate rash may appear within two weeks after the infection on the chest and abdomen. This is, looks like measles. Without pain or pruritus and fades in seven to ten days. Infection is most severe in infants less than one year with high parasitemia, high fever, may be similar to that in Kala Azar or called dromedary fever, as we'll discuss later, generalized edema and lymphadenopathy can occur, hepatosplenomegaly, meningoencephalitis, and the, young, uh, the infants or young children may die due to central nervous system involvement. ECG changes in 40% of acute cases are prolonged PR and QT intervals, low voltage QRS complex, ST depression and inverted T with tachycardia, various arrhythmias and cardiac failure may occur. This can occur in acute stage. Also, it can occur in trypanosomal deficiency in the same manner. Blood examination shows lymphocytosis. Serum globulin concentration is increased. There is inverted and uh, uh, albumin globulin ratio. Also, acute stage can end by recovery or death or entering into chronic stage. In the chronic stage, there is variable periods of remission and exacerbation with fever and parasitemia. Sometimes it is asymptomatic and the patient in chronic stage can transmit infection through blood donation, organ transplantation, or congenitally even with lactation through mother's milk. This is important for the transmission of infection. Cardiac changes in chronic stage occur at ages below 25 years. 
they are those of conduction changes and cardiomyopathy. ECG changes are partial or complete AV block, right bundle branch block, premature ventricular contractions, and in addition to QRS, P, and T wave changes like those of acute cases. There is progressive congestive heart failure, primarily right-sided. Digestive tract dilatation, which is called the mega phenomena, occur also in chronic Chagas disease. Megaesophagus causes progressive dysphagia, and megacolon causes progressive constipation. Both cases lead to cachexia and generalized intoxication. Rarely, there is central nervous system involvement and thyroid infection with goiter-like disease. These are x-rays showing the mega phenomena. This is, this is mega esophagus. This is due to the mega colon. You see how the colon is huge here and the intestine also is dilated due to constipation and the low passage of food. Here there is cardiomegaly. We can see here that the diameter of the heart is exceeding one third of the chest breadth. This, this is how we can consider that there is cardiomegaly. Also, we have here a barium meal with huge dilatation of the esophagus, which is merely seen when there is a barium meal. Diagnosis. This is by demonstration of parasites by blood film in the acute Stage and we can find the parasite in the blood. Also, if thin blood film doesn't reveal the parasite, we can do thick blood film. Then we can use culture to find the parasites also in blood. We use blood culture and then the blood is cultured on what we call NNN media. We call Novi McNeil media which is used for, uh, for uh, re uh, re replication and the culture of the hemoflagellates especially. Then we can use also xenodiagnosis. Xenodiagnosis means that we use laboratory animals which are the natural host of the parasite in diagnosis. So in this case, we can use here the redubit bugs for taking a blood meal from the patient. Then when the parasite replicates within a few days, we can sacrifice the bug, open its gut and find the epimastigotes so we can now diagnose the case. These bugs are laboratory bread bugs which are parasite clean because if one bug is infected, it becomes infected the whole of its life. So we must use clean laboratory bread bugs for xenodiagnosis. In the other picture here, we can see that the mother having her young child or a toddler child on her lap and covering the bug so he can hear of them and he can take the uh, he can take the test easily epidemiology of ripanosoma cruzi 
the triatomid or, or radiogate box are widespread all over America. But those who transmit Trypanosoma cruzi are present in Central and Latin America and South America only. Animal reservoir hosts are many wild rodents and forest animals and dogs and cats. One of the um, uh, one of the uh, uh, very uh, famous reservoir host is called armadillo. This armadillo is used by natives in Central and Latin America as a pet animal. So it can transmit the infection to the whole family. Human infection occurs mainly in Brazil, but South North America and Central America and South America down to Argentina can be infected having the disease. Treatment, Nifortimox or if it is called Lampet or Bayer 2505 in acute and early chronic cases is very beneficial. Also, benzonidazole or Rochagan from Roche Company has the same benefit as Nifortimox, but it inhibits nucleic acid synthesis, same as metronidazole. Allopurinol was used also in acute stages, but it is transformed into toxic adenine analogues by the enzyme system of the parasite. Also, ketoconazole as an antifungal was found to be protective to laboratory mice and inhibitory to amastigote proliferation in cell cultures.